Welcome to another episode of National of the Porsche Talk Raw. We have a highly, highly informative show for you. Uh, there aren't many academic studies on secession in the world, in America, at all. In fact, secession is considered largely a boutique academic subject. That's why many of the secession advocates are able to compete and push back against government officials and lawyers because there isn't much material to go off of. So you can relatively become an expert in short order in comparison to other aspects of law like corporate law or civil rights. There just isn't much to go on when it comes to the right of secession in international law and in American domestic law. Today, a new study came out that we're going to be covering. Is secession mostly about income or identity? Global Analysis of 3,003 Subnational Reasons by Klaus de Smet, Ignacio Ortuno Ortun, Honor Orzat, um, for the Bureau of Economic Research. We'll also be looking at this study, which we've been talking for a long time here at Calax, by Robert Young, How Do Peaceful Secession Movements Happen? Political Economy Research Group, Paper in Political Economy, London, Ontario, Department of Economics, University of Western Ontario. 1994. Now, this study came out in 2023, 2022. This study's from 1994. Both of them are going to say the same thing. Secession movements largely happen because of identity and not any other factor. Meaning that if you have a separate identity, you're more likely to secede given any other concept. And after we show you with these two academic studies, I'll show you how America considers California a separate country, and California considers America a separate country. We'll get to it in just a second. Um, you won't find this analysis of these academic studies anywhere else, but here at CalExit. We'll be right back. Let's get right into it. This is the major academic study that we're going to talk about now. It came out recently. There's not many studies on secession, so we want to get into a detailed review of this because nobody's going to cover that for you. Largely, the debate centers around this. Many people have said that money is the primary motivation for secession, that countries leave or want to leave larger unity of states because they think they can be more profitable because they already make more money and they think that they're putting more into the system. And certainly that's the case here in California. California is a donor state. We do make more um, than most American states with the world's fifth or fourth largest economy. And we contribute more to the federal system than we get out. That has been a major motivation for California independence and other independence movements. But there was also another major reason for CalExit. And that was culture. And I said this in the documentary of Warner Brothers Music. This also came up multiple times during 2016, 2017, when we exploded with fame. Culture was just as important as money. Californians had values, California values that they respected, and they didn't believe America shared it with them. And that was a big reason why California wanted to become independent when Donald Trump was elected. California knew that they financially could do it, but there really wasn't an impetus, um, a motivation. Donald Trump talking about how Mexicans are rapists and that it's okay to rape women was that cultural difference that sparked a catalyst here in California. Cultural difference was the big reason for CalExit in 2016, not money. People weren't saying, oh, we're going to be poor because of Donald Trump. They're saying, I'm going to live in an America I don't recognize because of Donald Trump. That's culture. That's values. And that actually backs up this study and what they came to. This study is going to conclude that identity is the key factor for secession and not income or anything else. Not language, not languages, not history, not borders. We're also going to cover this study, which largely shows that Peaceful secession movements can happen, and that when they do happen, they happen relatively quickly. That's why we referred to the study. It showed that over a three- to five-year period, uh, most legal secession movements are able to wrap up everything and, and complete the negotiations. That was certainly backed up by Brexit. So this study came out in 1994. Brexit happened about a decade later. No, about 
multiple decades later, and it actually backed up the study. Brexit happened pretty quick. The negotiations, once they had to vote, were pretty quick between England and Europe to get out, maybe one to two years, maybe three max. That backs up what this study says, that peaceful secession movements take about three to five years to negotiate, and then it's done. They also talk about other secession movements in there, and some of the other stuff that's in this study is going to back up this study. So let me show you without further ado. This is the original article that came out today, January 24th, 2023. Identity not can come drives desire to secede according to a new model from Southern Methodist University. You can see in this map, there's California. Increase in secession of support uh, within region identity difference. And it shows about 25 to 50% support in California. So that's, that's a chart. And increasing in secessionist support when eliminating within region identity differences. So that's the map we're going to show you. There's California. They are def talking about California. And then the other highlighted section is Quebec. We'll get to that in a second. Um, what sparks a region's desire to seek independence from their country? A new study from Southern Methodist University in Dallas. Uh, and the Universidad de Carlos III de Madrid, Spain, found that people identify identify with, found that the group that people identify with tends to play a bigger factor, factor in secession than differences in per capita income between regions. The study looks at 173 countries with 3,003 subnational regions like Texas and California. So the study directly looks at California and Texas says that in this article, and you just saw this map here showing California as part of the study. The mathematical model that SMU and UC3 created also would have correctly predicted the Soviet Union was in danger of collapse before its eventual demise in 1991. What we found was striking separatism would be alive and well, even if there were no income differences between regions, where it was almost completely die out if everyone spoke the same language. So if everyone spoke the same language, there'd be no separatism. However, if uh, people had different economies, they also found that that didn't really have an impact on secessionism. We were expecting to find that when a region makes more money than the host region, and it feels like it's supporting the center government more, that that's the primary reason for leaving. So Catalonia was a donor state. Catalonia was richer than the rest of Spain. Catalonia donated in. Scotland argued that they were rich, they had the North Sea oil, and they were contributing more to the system than they uh, wanted. California certainly said the same thing. We were richer than you, we're like one of the top 10 economies on our own, and we're contributing more to the system than we get out of it. But this study's arguing that something different. It's saying that's wrong. This idea that economics and economic driving and economic inequality and differences and being able to be a richer country is not the driving force of secession. It is cultural difference. If everybody spoke the same language, there'd be almost no secession. But if there were income differences in regions, there still would be. Um, if there was no income difference between regions, there would still be secession. And if there was no language difference, there would not be secession. That's what they're saying. Uh, this was published by the National Bureau of Economic Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, across the globe, they found that support for secession would drop from an average of 7.5% of a region's population to 0.6% in the absence of identity differences. So you go by 7.5% to basically half a percent, 7.5 to half a percent. Uh, once you can account for identity differences. At first is income per capita. If my region is relatively rich, I may feel that I'm subsidizing the rest of the country and that I would be better off if my region became ind independent. A second is identity. If my region has a separate ethnic or linguistic identity, I may feel less connected to the nation and prefer to secede. So these were the two major theories. And what they're saying is the second theory, identity is more important than economics. 
Um, the economists plugged in different scenarios into the model, such as income per capita, and uh, all if if everybody in that same nation spoke the same language. Um, and they looked at about 170 countries, 3,003 subnational regions, uh, about close to 2,500 hotspots, and I think about 3,000 independent languages. So that is the article that released the study, came out very recently. Here's the actual study itself. Let me make sure this comes out. So is secessionism mostly about income or identity? A global analysis of 3,003 subnational regions by Klaus Desmet, Ignacio Ortono Ortern, and Omer Ozak. Now, let me show you this real quick. Whoops. This is Ignacio Ortuno Ortun. He is from Spain. Spain has been dealing with the secession movement in Catalonia. Here's the, one of the other guys, Klaus Desmet. He is a professor at a university of economics in Texas, one of the major secession candidates. But check it out. He has a PhD from Stanford University located in California. So this guy, Klaus DeSmet, has his PhD in California and he's publishing in Texas. The top two secession movements in America. This guy's publishing in Spain and he's talking about Catalonia one of the largest secession movements in Europe. And they both helped publish this study. So let's go down here. Let's see if I can shrink this. This paper analyzes whether the propensity to secede by subnational regions responds mostly to differences in income per capita or to distinct identities. I looked at all these subnational regions and countries. Removing identity differences reduces the average support for secession from 7.5% to 0.6% or about half percent population. This paper analyzes whether propensity to secede by subnational regions responds mostly to differences in income per capita or to distinct identities. Um, Second. Okay. We explore this question in a quantitative political economy model. Political economy model. My words are not with me today. Um, where people's willingness to finance a public good depends on their income and identity. Using high resolution economic and linguistic data for the entire globe, we predict the propensity to secede of 3,003 subnational regions in 173 countries. Uh, there are currently activist secession movements in 54% of all countries. Some of the regions are relatively wealthy, spurring discontent among their population about subsidizing the rest of the country. Like we're talking about, that is a major driver. While there is general agreement that income per capita identity are fundamental drivers of the demand for secession, the relative importance remains debated. It tackles this question at an unprecedented global scale for all first level administrative regions of the world where people are less willing to contribute to a public good. And it asks if people are less willing to contribute to a public good if they're richer or if they have an identity that is different from the rest of the country. In our model, scale economies, income heterogeneity and identity differences, economies in comparison to each other, each other uh, a comparison of how wealthy run region a comparison of the economic strength of the two economies of the region, a comparison of the per capita income or relative wealth of the people of each region, and then a comparison of the identity differences of those two regions. That's what they're talking about here. The more an individual's identity differs from that of the rest of the population, the lower utility she, de she derives from public consumption. Meaning if she, if this person doesn't see themselves as an American and they see themselves as a Californian, they're going to be less interested in investing in national defense because they don't see that as a public good that necessarily benefits them like it does Americans. Hence, subnational regions with higher income per capita and a different identity from the rest of the country experience, on average, greater support for independence. Subnational regions, California, with higher income per capita, California, 
and different identity from the rest of the country. California experience on average greater support for independence. Well, California has more support for independence than any other state except for Texas. There's 50 states. California is about a third. Texas is about 45 percent. So we have we are a subnational region. We have a higher per capita income than America. We have a different identity from America, and we do experience one of the highest levels of support for secession in America. So Calix, it absolutely backs up this sentence by this ac academic study here. Um, within the top 10 group of regions with the strongest support of independence, we find such regions as Tibet, Asa, uh, in Indonesia, Lombardia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan, Tartarstan, Russia, and Catalonia, Spain. I just wanted to show you some other independence movements out there. Uh, they looked at a list of 2,500 active secessionist movements. We compare our model predictions, the data on the vulnerability of states to collapse the autonomy of regional governments and the intensity of conflict within countries. And we also calibrated the model to account for the breakup of the Soviet Union. First, we show that removing income per capita differences across subnational regions with countries has limited effect on the demand for secession whereas removing identity differences makes support for secession vanish. Removing identity differences makes support for secession vanish. More specifically, starting from a baseline average, regional support for secession of 7.5%, we see a drop by 6.9 percentage points in the absence of identity differences and no decline in the absence of income per capita differences. This suggests that identity is the main driver for the demand of separatism, whereas income per capita plays only a minor role. This leads to an almost tripling of the support for secessionism at the regional level. Um, removing income per capita differences has essentially no effect on the demand for secession, whereas removing identity differences lowers support for secession from an average of 6.4% in the region's population to half a percent. Taken together, these results strongly suggest that identity more than income is the key to understanding secessionism. Creating a common identity that cuts across existing ethno-linguistic cleavages is more likely to lead to territorial stability. Okay. I wanted to point out this study by Alessina and Spoliori, um, theoretical work on the size of nations has focused on a trade-off between the benefits of scale economies and the cost of heterogeneity, Alessina and Spiliotti, uh, 1997. So this book was called The Size of Nations, and it was by Alberto Alessina and Spoliotti in 1997. And they said specifically, California is the size of an average nation state. So I just wanted to point out this academic paper points at another academic paper by Alessina and Spoliotti. And that academic paper said California is the size of an average nation state. Just saying. Um, here's a study by Alvarez Pereira Portos or Rodos 2018 emphasized the interaction between economic and cultural variables. Support for autonomy and secession is greater in richer regions, but only to the extent that they are culturally different. 183 provinces of the Soviet Union between 1987 and 1992 and finds evidence of more protests and larger territories that are ethnically distant from the rest of the country. So they looked at protests in the Soviet Union as it was starting to fall apart. And most of the protests were in ethnically distant parts of the country. There are very little papers on, qual on country stability, just like there, are very little research, very, there is very little research on secession. Rather than focusing on scale economies from public goods, others have considered market access through trade as a main advantage of being part of a larger union. When we did the documentary with Warner Brothers Music, they had some critics say that, you know, if you get cut off and you leave, you can't trade. And that's ridiculous uh, because California um, pushed, identified, and negotiated for America every single trade deal America has done since 1903. That's from the book um, Global California Rising to the Cosmopolitan Challenge by Professor Abraham Lowenthal, University of Southern California. Uh, rely on a qualitative model to analyze the effects of Scotland, Catalonia, and Basque country became independent nations and estimates losses in real GDP ranging from 8.5 to 16% in the Basque country. So just another little side thing. Um, this study is pointing at another study that says if Scotland, Catalonia, or Basque country became independent, they would lose money. Their GDP would drop from about 
8.5 to 16%. Whereas in California, our GDP would grow. Um, this is something we've also said in the post-World War II period, gaining market access has mostly about signing trade agreements between countries. In the same way that national policies can promote cohesion of a nation state, regional policies can enhance separatist sentiment. Klotz, Figueres, and Masella, 2013, show that individuals who are more exposed to teaching in Catalan are more likely to feel Catalan than Spanish, independently of whether their parents are Catalan in region, in origin. So in Catalonia, the region in Spain, if you were exposed to the Catalonian language, you identify, you're more likely to identify as a Catalonian, even if genetically you're actually more Spanish than Catalonian. And this is what the study shows. If you teach people regional differences culturally, it's very strong. And here in California, we have a lot of regional differences. So we ban travel for California government officials to other states if they don't have, if those states don't have our same opinion on LGBTQ rights. That is absolutely a regional policy that can enhance separatist sentiment. If you don't support LGBTQ people just like we do in California, we ban travel to you. California's done that to about 23 states. That is definitely a regional policy that enhances separatism separate sentiment, and it is absolutely happening here in California. Um, this is the, this is the, this is the, uh, the metrics and how they did the study. They looked at about 7,000 languages from the world language mapping system, linguistic differences between subnational regions and countries. Within subnational regions, linguistic differences, Income per capita relative to current country. Um, since the breakup of the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, the only successful secessions have been East Timor from Indonesia, Eritrea from Ethiopia, South Sudan from Sudan. The only internationally recognized unions have been South and North Yemen and East and West Germany. So there hasn't been a whole lot going on. Um, These are some other secession movements that they said we should pay attention to. Tibet, uh, the Southern Nations, or Fur people, F-U-R, of, uh, um, oh, Southern Nations, that's the Tigray of Ethiopia. Bavaria and Saarland in Germany, uh, Banda Asa in Indonesia, Lombardia and Sardinia, that's in the northern right side of Italy, Okinawa, Friesland in the Netherlands, Arad or Romania, Tartarstan, Russia, Western Cape, South Africa. We've actually talked to the Western Cape Independence Movement in South Africa, Galicia and Cal Catalonia, Spain. Model-based share of regional population in favor of secession. What I didn't like about this study was it says model-based share of regional population in favor of secession. Um, you'll see that there's some support for like the four corners, the indigenous people who live there. Uh to secede and in parts of Mexico. But California has 35% supporting secession. Texas has 40%. Neither Texas or California are listed here. So I didn't think that was appropriate. Uh, it's model-based shared population. So they looked at the self-determination database by Sambanis et al. in 2018. Um, Strong predictor for self another expression of country instability, vulnerability, fragile states index developed by the Fund for Peace. That was another thing they looked at. Um, just gonna, more metrics, 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 studies, etc. We started by conducting two counterfactual exercises. In a first exercise, we removed differences in subnational income per capita by assuming that each region's income per capita is equal to the country average. In that case, the incentives to separate depend on identity. In a second exercise, we remove identity differences by assuming that everyone speaks the same language. So that, that was a comparison to how they could find out if income or identity was more important. When removing differences in income per capita and maintaining identity is the main determinant, the average support for secession does not drop. In fact, it even increases by 0.6%. This may come as a surprise since secessionism tends to be stronger in regions with higher income per capita. However, there are also many subnational regions with lower income per capita and distinct identity in those regions. Equalizing income per capita tends to strengthen the support for independence. 
this is what we were talking about. Everybody assumes that when you look at Scotland, Catalonia, California, and many other secession movements, it's about money. They think that they could keep, um, uh, there's also the Biafra in, um, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank on it. It's the largest, most populous country in Africa. And there's a region called Biafra and the same thing. They make more money. They put more into the federal system than they get out. And so a lot of people think that is the reason for secession. But this paper saying, no, it's actually identity. And if you make the financial reasons not there, then you still have people who want to secede. But if you make everybody speak the same language and they have the same culture, secession interest almost dissipates. In contrast, when removing identity differences and maintaining differences in income per capita, the support for secession drops on average 6.5%. Um, those are the other major uh, secession movements. While identity differences with the rest of the nation strengthen secessionist tendencies, identity differences within subnational regions diminish secession tendencies. Indeed, regions have less reason to become independent if their own identity is diverse. So if your breakaway region is itself brought up of many different identities, it may not be able to separate because it doesn't have a cohesive identity that's different from the main host nation. That's what they're saying. And we're getting close to the map. I want to, there you go. Increase in secessionist support when eliminating within regional differences. So there's the map. Uh, about 10 to 25 percent for California. Actually, that should be 32 percent. Um, but it shows, yeah, increase in secessionist support when eliminating within region identity differences. So if you eliminate um, similarities, what happens is interest in secession in California goes through the roof. Okay. Okay, so that is that study. And basically what it showed you was everybody thought it's about money. And when you look at Scotland, Catalonia, Biafra, um, many other independence movements, they do make more money than the host country and they would be more wealthy if they were independent. And certainly that was the motivation here. But just like here in California, what this study is saying is that culture is the main difference. California exploded with interest in secession with Donald Trump's election. That was over cultural things, not over financial things. People weren't saying, oh, Donald Trump's going to make California poor. They were saying, I don't recognize this country. In fact, let me see if we can find that real quick. If you bear with me, California legislature uh, woke up in foreign country. Um, they Leon. There it is. All right, let me show you this. So this was on November 9th, 2016, a joint statement from the California legislative leaders on the results of the presidential election for Donald Trump. This is by uh, Senate uh, President and Assembly President. So all of the legislature of California. And today, this is what they said. Today, we woke up feeling like strangers in a foreign land. Because yesterday's Americans expressed their views on a pluralistic and democratic society that are clearly inconsistent with the values of California. So that was the reason for Cal Exit. Woke up like strangers in a foreign land, different values. That's a cultural statement. And the California legislature made that statement. The California legislature, the day Trump was elected, says we don't recognize this culture. We feel very different from them. And that acts absolutely backs up this study here. Uh, we just got done, which said it's really about culture and not economics. That's what the California legislature said. Woke up like strangers in a foreign land. But there's another study that we wanted to cover. And it's this one here. 
Um, so this was a study we've talked about before. How do peaceful secession movements happen? 1994 by Robert Young, political economy, political economy research group papers in political economy, economics, working papers, archive, Western University. Uh, this was originally published in the Department of Economics, University of Western Ontario in 1994. So let me cover that. How do peaceful secession movements happen? Here we go. Societal constraints on decision makers negotiating a new agreement, for example, may be far more binding to the constraints sensed by politicians who must decide how far to push secession demands, how to respond to them, or how to negotiate the unprecedented transition to separate sovereign entities. So time constraints on negotiation for peaceful secession is based upon the politicians and their understanding of politics. And what they mean by that is, in this paper, they're going to say politicians who are in charge when the interest in secession happens have to negotiate and they have to get that deal done quickly because this is a legal secession movement, which means it happened in a democracy. Therefore, if you're the elected official and you can't make it happen within a few years, they'll vote you out. That's what that's saying. And we saw that with Brexit. So this article came out in 1994. Brexit happened like 20 years later. We literally saw this with Brexit. Theresa May was hired as prime minister in England to make Brexit happen. She stalled. She couldn't get it done. She did all the sorts of stuff. She was gone. And they replaced her with someone else. David Cameron also couldn't get uh, Brexit to go away or finalize the deal. And he, too, was removed. Boris Johnson in England was brought in because he could get the Brexit deal done. And he stayed as prime minister until he did something about COVID-19. So... When you look at Brexit, it absolutely backs up what the study said in 1994, decades earlier, that with peaceful secession movements, they're going to happen quick because elected officials have to achieve results or they're voted out of office. That's ancillary to our main point. Um, this is accepted by the other government in principle, a move that obviously distinguishes peaceful from contested Secessions, since the only other alternative is to attempt violent repression. Negotiations, negotiations follow inevitably, and they are fast, limited to big issues constrained by foreign powers and conducted by small teams to which broad authority is delegated. So negotiations in peaceful secession movements happen fast. They're limited to big issues constrained by powers and conducted by small teams. That is also how Brexit happened. Peaceful secessions occur continuously and involve minimal changes to the existing constitutional order. Uh, so when they're looking at secession movements since World War II, there's been about 37 of them, 12 of which have been peaceful. So about two-thirds of secession movements are violent and one-third is peaceful. We're gonna, hold on, this is, is going to play out. So he's talking about the secession movement between Sweden and Norway. So there's Sweden and Norway, and they had a secession movement. Well, he's pointing out there was no serious economic disputes between the countries before the secession movement. That backs up this study. It's not about economy, it's about um, culture. No serious economic disputes between Sweden and Norway, although they did secede. In the case of Sweden and Norway, however, growing nationalism and liberal demands for a fully responsible government led to secession. Right there. No economic differences or disputes. Big liberal national cultural differences between Sweden and Norway. Absolutely backs up this study. Let's keep going. More important under colonial rule, Singapore and Malay states had been governed as an economic youth since the 19th century. Other causes of friction included the distribution of tax revenue in the Federation, economic favoritism towards the Borneo territories, and Singaporean underrepresentation in the parliament and cabinet. Now, when you look at this, is talking about Singapore secession from Malaysia. Yes, they mentioned tax revenues. Yes, they mentioned economic favoritism. But they also mentioned that Singapore had underrepresentation in the government. That's a cultural thing. Um, 
Indonesia had led to the imposition of emergency power rules. Um, and Singapore didn't like that. The major incompatibility between the units, however, concerned race and the deep ideology that would underpin the federal political system. The major incompatibility between the units, Malaysia and Singapore, had to do with race and ideology, not income. So race and ideology were the main drivers for Singapore secession from Malaysia, which backs up this. Advanced, and I doubt, Don, Lee Kuan Yew from Singapore, advanced an ideology of progressivism, individualism, and pluralism under the slogan of Malaysia, Mal Malaysians for Malaysia. While the long-standing conflict was expressed through partisan competition, it went to the cultural and systematic foundations of the Federation. Right there again. Why did Singapore secede from Malaysia? Because the differences went to the cultural and systematic foundations of the Federation. So what we're seeing is that Norway and Sweden separated because of cultural regions. Singapore and Malaysia separated because of cultural regions. Um, one sentence. Okay, now getting back to negotiations. As discussed below, attention is focused on the immediate need to reach a settlement rather than on constitutional matters. Hence, it is the leaders in place who assume responsibility for negotiation session. That's going back to peaceful secession movements have to be done quickly. Look at Theresa May. Um, the crisis of secession then solidifies each side politically. Uh, one second here. Settlements are made quickly. Negotiations about secession are not protracted. When a unit breaks up peacefully, the two sides um, disengage quickly, and the negotiations concern a relatively short list of items. So this part is saying negotiations happen quickly right here. We also saw that earlier in the beginning of the study uh, that negotiations for peaceful secession happen quickly. The other thing is that they looked at secession movements between Norway and Sweden and Singapore and Malaysia, and they said, really not about economics. It was about culture. And that backs up this study. It's really not about income. It's about cultural differences. And now that brings us to the last part. Um, California is seen as a foreign country. California is seen as a foreign land by America, and Californians don't really like Americana, cultural differences. Let me show you. Um, so here we go. Washington uh, Times, March 1st, 2017. One third of Americans wouldn't miss California if it seceded. That was a poll done March 1st, 2017. February 2017. Uh, they also did a poll on, is it time to pull out a failed state? And that was in Real Clear Politics, a conservative magazine. And they said, let's get rid of California. February 13th, 2017, we had the Oroville Dam that collapsed here. And people from around America were posting on social media that they hoped Californians died. So many conservatives from around America were saying, boy, we hope those Californians die in that Orville Dam. San Francisco Chronicle did an article about this on February 13, 2017. Orange County Register, February 5th, 2017. Rest of USA to California, make our day with Cal exit. Orange County Register, please leave. We don't like you, February 2017. February 4th, 2017. Opinion, out-of-state conservatives are some of CalExit's biggest fans. This is from the Los Angeles Times saying conservatives in America hate us and would vote us out. February 4th, 2017, Los Angeles Times. American Lookout, conservatives should fully support the effort to secede for California. Joe for America, this was a guy running um, for Congress. We should be so lucky. Joe for America was Joe the plumber, and he was a Midwesterner and became famous during the, um, the guy who ran against Barack Obama 
um, the military guy, McCain. Uh, Joe for America was Joe the plumber who was in the John McCain campaign. And he said, boy, it'd be great if we got rid of California for America. Uh, here's Forbes magazine, November 3rd, 23rd, 2016, saying, let's get rid of California as Americans. Forbes magazine, November 23rd, 2016, November 10th, 2016, let California secede and leave conservative daily news, November 9th, 2016, by the rap. Calix, it gets a collective well buy from Twitter. So November 9th, 2016, there were so many people saying, if California wants to secede, go ahead and go from America. They had to do an article in The Wrap. October 4, 2014, national voter poll conducted by Fox News shows over half of Americans want California kicked out of the nation. October 24th, Fox News poll. June, July 2014. American real estate company Movoto looks at data across all America and concludes that California is the least patriotic of all 50 states. That was from ABC News, July 4, 2014. August 2013, Business Insider conducts a poll showing Americans hate California the most and would like it to secede. August 2013, July 2013, car sales across America are looked at by true car sales data and concludes that California and Hawaii are the least patriotic. July 2013, 2014. Uh, May 2012, a survey of all USA CEOs by American Magazine's chief executive magazine. Widely prints a quote from one of the CEO, CEOs surveyed saying, California should secede from the union. We should let it be its own country. So May 2012, they surveyed all the CEOs across America. And they included a quote by one of them saying, we help California. We hope it just gets kicked out. That was in the North Bay Business Journal. May 2012, February 2012, San Francisco Chronicle asks, why do so many people hate California? There was so much hate against California. San Francisco Chronicle had to have an article about it. February 2012, February 2012, Los Angeles Weekly, the other major newspaper in LA says, why is California America's most hated state? So you had the two largest newspapers in California in February 2012, LA Weekly, San Francisco Chronicle, both asking, damn, why do Americans hate us so much? February 12th, February 2012, poll by public policy polling shows that Americans have the most negative opinion by California by far in comparison to any other state. February 2012, public policy polling. November 2010, LA Times opinion staff admits it seems like Americans really hate Californians. November 2010, LA Times opinion staff says, wow. Uh, it seems like Americans really hate us. May 2010, American National Magazine Daily Signal suggests that California is not part of America. October 2009, American National Magazine Time Magazine admits there's an irrational bias by Americans against California. October 2019, Time Magazine. The media portrayed California as a noir fantasy land of overcrowded schools, perpetual droughts, celebrity breakdowns, illegal immigration, hellish congestion, and general malaise captured in headlines like Meltdown on the ocean in California's wipeout economy. Will California become America's first failed state? The crazy California criticisms is likely to continue regardless of the facts. That's Time Magazine in 20, 2009 saying, damn, really looks like America hates California. May 2009, New York Times admits that American states hate California. Other states may hate California. That was a blog. May 2009, will California survive its crack up in the New York Times? New York Times goes, wow, looks like people hate Cali. June 2008. Oh, uh, that's it. Right. Television reporter says that everyone in California hates America and laughs about California is losing their home. Beck, a handful of people who hate America are losing their homes in a forest fire today. Media Matters, October 27th, 2007. Beck is a major uh, conservative commentator. And he said, hey, a lot of people who hate America are losing their homes. Ha, 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 ha. And that went out to the Midwest and conservative America, and they loved it. Um, okay, now let's go to this. So that was America saying, we don't view you, California, as though you're one of us. Cultural differences from America. We don't like you. We did polls saying we don't like you. Uh, we wish death upon you. We talk about how it'd be great for you to just be gone. And we've done this since, I don't know, 2000, um, 2000 and 
nine from 2009 to 2017. That's almost 10 years. 2009, 2017, almost 10 years of Americans saying, you're not one of us. Okay, now let's take a look at this. These are Californians saying, I don't like America. So Janae Irvin, active duty sailor, uh, refused to salute the American flag. And she's from California. She's the only active duty military person to refuse to salute the flag. And she's from California. That was in International Business Times, uh, talking about Janae Irwin, active duty. Um, here we go. 2010, school in California kicks out student who wore an American flag by NBC Bay Area. Students wearing American flag shirts sent home in 2010. NBC Bay Area. 2011, California official government agency bans the U.S. flag. That's by the weekly standard. California balks at public display of American flag in 2011. 2012, Napa. Use of American flag as car cover sparks neighborhood debate. So 2012, Napa. This guy had the American flag as a car cover, and they told him to get rid of it. 2014, Murrieta in the Inquisitor.com. Illegal immigrants burn the American flag. And it's totally cool. Nobody does anything. 2014, Calexico uh, displays an insult to the American people of imperialism. Brawley opinion. Uh, in Calexico, they took down the American flag. 2014, Ivy Press Online. Brawley. 2014, uh, in San Diego, vandals defaced this gigantic American flag on the side. And nobody did anything about it. And people kind of supported it. 2014, San Diego also, a California man was told to take down his American flag inside his apartment or he would not be allowed to renew his lease. 2014, San Diego, right wing news. 2015, San Diego. 2015, Irvine. Students at UC Irvine vote to ban the American flag. 2015, Yuba, the Gateway Pundit. School for students forced students to change the American flag themed shirt claiming design is gang related. So in 2015 in Yuba, a school forced people to change their American flag. Uh, they were not aware to allowed to wear the American flag to school. 2016 Riverside, firefighters forced to remove police flag due to extremism. So the American flag on the cop car had to be taken down in 2016 Riverside because it made people scared. Yeah, they had to rip the flag off cop cars in 2016 in Riverside. 2016 in Clovis, Man was ordered to take down the California flag. I live right by there. 2016 Folsom, American flag ripped National Guard soldiers. So there was a National Guard and he had his flag ripped down in Folsom. Nobody did anything. 2016, San Francisco, Trump supporters American flag stolen. Uh, so Trump supporters had an American flag stolen and people thought that was great. So I'm just showing you that there's all of these instances going back to 2010 where government agencies in California ban the U.S. flag. People are told to take down their American flag. American flags are burned. Students can't wear the American flag at school. Veterans are told you can't have the American flag in your house or you'll be kicked out. Lots of American flags taken down. Lots of flags destroyed. Lots of it exclusively in here, California. Well, that's different than how Americans feel. And then I just showed you how Americans don't seem to be that interested in California. So um, let's, that's the proof that when it comes to Cal Exit, what we're talking about is cultural differences. That's basically it. So I showed you all that to see. We just reviewed a study that said cultural differences, not economy, is the most important. That was the study. Then I showed you another study we've known for about for years that also said that many of the instances of secession were about culture and not economy. And then I just showed you uh, how California sees America as a foreign land. Um, Californians don't like America and America really doesn't like California. When you add that all up together, what it means is that California's case for secession is very strong. Our identity is very different from America's. 
American identity is different from us. Nothing is bringing us closer together. And when you look at California's LGBTQ travel bans against 23 states, that's really telling half of America, we don't share your values and we don't want to be associated with you, which really just annoys them. So cultural differences here to stay, woke up in foreign land, like the California legislature said. And now we're finding out from one academic study supported by another one, that cultural differences are the main driver of successful secession movements, not necessarily economics, and California has cultural differences in spades. Hope you enjoyed this academic review. Nobody reviews these studies and nobody will give you the level of depth and insight that we have with these academic studies. That's why we pride ourselves on being the experts when it comes to secession in any discussion. Okay, thank you. We'll see you soon.